Well, joining me now is Dr. Juan Dumois. He's a pediatric infectious disease specialist with Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital in St. Petersburg. Dr. Dumois, th thank you for joining me today. You're welcome. Um, just a few questions, and I want to start out with the rapid diagnosis of PAM or primary amoebic meningoencephalitis critical. critical. Why is the rapid diagnosis of Neglaria such a challenge? Diagnosing a Neglaria infection of the brain in a patient can be challenging not because we don't know something's wrong with the patient. The patient comes in with very obvious symptoms of meningitis, um, headache, fever, stiff neck, but there are a lot of causes of meningitis, many of which are more common than Neglaria. Mm -hmm. So it's not in the forefront of a doctor's mind when they're evaluating that patient. They've probably already decided to do a spinal tap because it's necessary to get some spinal fluid for testing for evidence of meningitis. But even then, the doctor may not be thinking to order the right test for Neglaria because that requires a special test of the spinal fluid. Um, even if the doctor is aware of Neglaria as a possible cause of meningitis, they may not be thinking of asking the right questions because we get Neglaria infection of the brain if fresh water that has the amoeba in it goes up our nose within two weeks before the meningitis symptoms. So the doctor actually needs to ask that question. Has uh, this patient been in any fresh water uh, where they might have uh, dunked their head under water, where water might have gone up their nose in the two weeks before the onset of symptoms? And if the answer is yes, then Neglaria needs to be checked for. Yeah, and one of the very interesting things I saw in your presentation was your uh, talk about the PAM protocol. And that's what you're using at All Children's, I take it? It is. It is. And um, can you give the audience a Reader's Digest version of the PAM protocol, which yeah. you guys are doing at uh, Johns Hopkins? Yes. So what this protocol does is when the doctor is thinking a patient has meningitis and they're putting an order into the computer of starting the testing for what kind of infection it might be, the computer then pops up an alert asking, did you ask about fresh water going up the nose in the last two weeks? That provides the immediate rem reminder like, oh, I don't think I did, let me check. And if the answer is yes, then it provides a prompt to order that right test for amoeba and the spinal fluid, and that way the rapid diagnosis can be made. That's, that's absolutely brilliant. Um, and lastly, in Orlando, there's a pharmaceutical company called Profonda. I'm sure you're familiar with that. Yes. And they have the drug Miltefacin. Yes. Um, there's a number of hospitals in Florida and elsewhere across the country that carry it now in their emergency departments and their pharmacies. Can you talk about that and the importance of that? Well, this drug Miltefacin, we think is an important part of the combination of drugs we use to treat patients with PAM. Um, we don't know necessarily that it's the most important, but we don't want to exclude it. And because early treatment is very important for these patients, it's ideal that the hospital has it in their pharmacy when you make the diagnosis. It used to be that if you wanted to get the drug, the only supplier was the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta, and they would have to FedEx it overnight, which was a delay in starting that part of the treatment. We do give about five other antibiotics too, right. but this one is important. So we think, and we've decided at our children's hospital mm -hmm. to stock it in the pharmacy so that we can use it should the need arise. And clearly you would encourage other hospitals to do that. Yeah, I think that any hospital that might potentially be doing spinal taps on patients considered for meningitis may want to carry this drug. Yeah. Um, it also is easy for the hospital pharmacies to stock it because they don't have to pay for it unless they use it. Whereas many other drugs, the pharmacy has to pay for the drug in order to have it available. Mm -hmm. That's not the case with this one. They can stock it for free until it's used, then it's paid for. Important piece of information. Dr. Demois, I appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right.